In today's consumerist world, where these must-have deals bombard us from every angle, maintaining control over our spending can be a difficult task. In this video, I'll share seven powerful tips that have helped me to avoid overspending and gain more freedom. Number one, realize what you give up when you buy. When you buy anything, it's not just about the money you spend. There's always some sort of trade-off or sacrifice in play. For example, every dollar that you spend represents the time that you have worked to earn that dollar. So let's say that you are earning $20 per hour and something costs $200, that item costs 10 hours of work. But actually, if we think about this and take all the taxes and other costs, living expenses there as well, that is even way more that you have to actually work to earn something, like to have $200 saved for something extra. So this amount could actually be even double or triple, but in general I would say calculating how much something costs, like how many hours of your life you need to dedicate, for example, to work, to be able to afford that can really put things in different perspective. And then again, there are other costs as well than just the money and work. For example, there's the opportunity cost. When you're choosing to spend that money on something, it means you cannot spend it on something else. And that means that maybe you are missing out on investing that in something that is even more valuable. And for me, at least, this has been a big factor when I'm thinking about if I'm buying something or not. Because I understand that if I invest a dollar today or let's say a thousand dollars today, that will not be the value in let's say 10 years or 20 years from now if I invest it in a smart place where the amount just compounds over the years. For me, the idea of financial freedom very much outweighs the feeling or need to have fun in my 20s. I think already I am having fun in my 20s, even though I'm not spending that much, but I don't even feel the need that I should spend more. I'm much rather investing money right now if I have anything extra. So ask yourself, is this the best use for this money? And then what's the actual cost financially, physically in your house as well, and also mentally? Number two, accept that stuff won't transform your life. There's something called fulfillment curve, and I think that that illustrates my point quite well here. So we have their fulfillment and then money spent. And then there's this curve and we will write stuff there. So first we will have the point of survival. And that means if you have a bed, you have blanket, you have electricity, stuff that are really required for your survival, of course, you will be very much fulfilled or feeling happy when you get those things. And the next level is comfort. Here we put things that give a lot of comfort in your life, but or are not really necessary for your survival. So for example, your phone, your computer, having some clothing options, or for example, a separate pair of boots for the winter. And then the last point is luxury. These are things that are kind of like one up from the comfort. So for example, changing my old laptop to a powerful PC so that I can do things faster. Having multiple nice big houseplants instead of just one small one that could be in the comfort zone, I guess. And then having multiple pairs of running shoes for different services, for different conditions. And then in many of these curves, people put the enough point kind of on the luxury. I don't know if I think this is very personal that you can be having enough even in the comfort, but I think it's something for you to decide and understand where for you it is enough. But what's very important to avoid is going to downside, going to the overconsumption, where things don't anymore give you or nothing anymore gives you satisfaction no matter what you buy. Don't assume that your life will be miserable without a certain item, especially if it's in the luxury category of things. Many times we overestimate the power some things, some material thing will have on our lives. Number three, set your own standards. In a world full of opinions and different lifestyles, it's very important that you set your own standards and that you trust them when it comes to buying habits. Don't let others dictate your decisions regarding your possessions. People may offer advice and suggestions about what you should do and how you should live, but just understand that they will always be based on their views on life and 
not your actual circumstances. And of course, this also applies to me and you. I say things in my videos that you should do and you shouldn't do and buy this and don't buy that, but still, you shouldn't just think that that is absolutely true because I said it. You should question, in my opinion, everything and everybody and think for yourself. Does that make any sense for you? Should you do that or no? I think this critical thinking in general got me started with this minimalist and frugal living journey. So I will keep doing this myself as well. And that's a good tip for you to do. And if you are now critically thinking, should you do critical thinking? That's completely up to you. You can do it or not. Part of this critical thinking and knowing your own standards is, I think, to think what is enough for you. How many things do you need? How many TVs do you need in your house? Some people say zero and some people say in every room there must be a TV. So there are not, not right or wrong answers here. And then as well think what is for you the level of survival in TVs or shoes, clothes, whatever. Uh, what's the level of comfort? And then what is the level of luxury? Because often we buy things that we think we need because of some social expectations or even our own perception of needs, but they are not our actual needs. We just think that they are, but they are not. Number four, identify triggers. Understanding what triggers your impulse to spend can help you make more mindful decisions and avoid unnecessary purchases. One very good exercise to understand yourself better and where certain buying habits are coming from is to do this environment imagination. So imagine yourself in an environment where you wouldn't spend anything and you wouldn't even feel the need to spend or buy anything. For me, this is a place, for example, living in off-grid somewhere, completely surrounded by nature and bird sounds and stuff like that, where there's no constant stimulation or advertisements or flashing lights or things like that. Moving to an environment like this, I think would help massively, but that would be quite a lot to ask or to do. But I think it's not required, for example, for me to move off grid, to start getting some of these benefits, to start changing things in my life and go away from this consumerist way of life. So no matter what this environment or place is for you, think how you can generate similar circumstances feelings or ways of thinking in your current life situation. So for example, for me, remove the stimulation that makes me lose the connection with myself and with people and everything that is around me. That is already helping me even though I'm not moving completely off grid. Number five, minimize useless ads in your life. While I understand that advertising is not inherently evil thing and it actually plays a role, a big role, for us to get more awareness about products or services that can help and improve our lives a lot, I think we have reached the limit. We have reached the point where there's just so much noise and so much of this useless, irrelevant ads being shown to us and it just makes us feel overwhelmed. Like I get this Temu advertisement every single day, even though I have never bought anything from there, never plan to buy anything from there. I'm the opposite of their target audience because I don't buy from sites like this, stuff that are probably so cheap and bad quality. <laughs> That's why I think it's crucial that you minimize your exposure to these ads that don't contribute to your well-being and happiness, peace in any way. I have three practical ways that you can actually do this. First one is to use some digital tools, tools for example, the ad blocker. I think there are multiple of these that you can find. Then the second one is unsubscribing from newsletters and marketing emails that don't give you any value. They just promote all the time products. I have found that some newsletters do this. I enjoy the ones that there's actually a person behind it and is telling some story and every now and then if there's a promotion that's fine but then there are these big companies that just want your money from you and that's something that I don't want to waste my precious Gmail space on. And then the third one is to opt for these ad-free services or subscriptions if you want to invest in that. If you have the money and you believe they're giving a lot of value and the ads are bothering you, then definitely do that. Number six, start a no buy year or no buy month. These are challenges where you commit to not buying anything non-essential for a set period of time. I think they really offer you the opportunity to 
reassess what are truly your needs and then see what are your buying habits, what are your spending habits and then find out certain triggers as well. There are a lot of videos on YouTube that are giving you tips and guidelines on how to do this. I haven't done a challenge like this myself. I have never felt really the need to do a whole no buy month or no buy year or maybe I have done all <laughs> no buy multiple years already uh, just without even realizing it. But my mother actually did this some time ago. Her challenge was basically to not buy any new clothes and she didn't even want to specify a certain period of time because she wanted to challenge herself like kind of how long she can be without buying any new clothes. Like what's the amount of weeks or months or years even that she could do. And it's actually kind of good that she didn't settle for, for example, one month or one year because take a guess how long she could survive without three whole years. Number seven, focus on connecting, not staying clean. Johan Hari said in his famous TED talk, everything you think you know about addiction is wrong, that the opposite of addiction is not sobriety, but connection. So for those people that are struggling to stop shopping and spending, buying things, this means focusing on nurturing and creating supportive and meaningful relationships rather than just trying to resist the urge to buy. Addressing the deeper emotional and social needs is essential. This is the way if you want to stop buying things long term, not just now. Focus on building strong relationships with other people and also with yourself. That will make you realize that you don't need to buy or spend to have a good life. You don't need to impress anyone with your possessions because the people are already there. The connection with yourself is already there. Thank you so much for watching. Here is another good video for you. Remember to stay kind and meaningful in your own beautiful journey. See you in the next one.